official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. The Apache Kid, a name that brought a cold chill of fear to the Southwest of the 1890s. Reared as a scout in the U.S. Army, this well-mannered young Indian suddenly became a stalking werewolf with a bloodlust, the most terrifying hunter of human beings in all Apache-infested territory of Arizona. No trouble this time, Mr. Samba. Wagon's almost at foot. Looks like we put the fear into all raiders, red or white, eh, kid? Well, Cyber's Apache scouts, best fighters in whole territory. After all the time I spent training and civilizing you Indians, you sure ought to be. Let's join the wagons. Guess we spoke too soon. You go around there and come up the gully. Just a kid. Why'd you shoot him? He'd jump at me. Did you have to kill him? Even a tenderfoot could see he's not a hostile. He's from the San Carlos Agency. He'd jump at me. I didn't have time to look close. But he didn't even have a gun. If I make mistake, Mr. Cyber, sorry. Here I nurse you along like my own son. Teach you army manners so you can make top sergeant. You go shooting down a kid like like you never learned anything at all. I say sorry. All right, kid, all right, let it go. Well, anyway, it's the first trouble you ever caused me. Margaret Jones, railroad detective, was in the Globe, Arizona Depot in the summer of 1888, checking on a lost shipment of mining gear when two Indians raided the place, killed the ticket agent, and stole the company payroll. I'm Matt Clark. Headquarters sent us to Fort Huachuca because there were some Apache Indians stationed there working for the government as scouts. They were under the command of Al Cyber. You're a detective, Matt. You know how people talk. The nearest hostile Apaches are prisoners over in Florida. That's more than a thousand miles away, and the people around here are still jumpy. Every time they see an Apache out of chains, they think he's drunk and dangerous. I'm sorry if I appear to be stubborn, Mr. Cyber, but all the men who came into that station were Apaches. I'm sorry if I appear to be blunt, Miss Jones, but would you know the difference between an Apache and a Yaki? Look, Al. Talking like this won't get us anywhere. I know Jones is not an Indian expert, but she's good at remembering faces. All I want her to do is take a look at your Apaches before we try someplace else. I trust my boys, or they wouldn't be scouts. Well, I guess I won't get you out of my hair till you've had your way. I'll round up my men. Are all your scouts here on the post? No, two of them are down at Casa Grande. Might as well forget about them, Jonesy. We'll take a look at the ones who are within shooting distance of Globe. I'm ready right now. Just as you say, Miss Jones. Come along with me. We didn't know it at the time, but there was a very good reason why Jonesy didn't turn up any Apache Raiders that first day at Fort Huachuca.
that's up, Al. Report is that Indians raided a Mexican family near the border. Wouldn't be some of Geronimo's hostiles back from Florida, would it? No, I'm warning you, Matt. Stop rubbing that sore place. You and that woman sound like you got it in for my boys because they're Indians. Well, they're just as good as you are. Made that way by orders of President Cleveland himself. You know me better than that. All I want you to do is to count for your men. Now, let's get this straight. I've got just two men out. They're together at Casa Grande. One of them's the Apache Kid, top sergeant and the most dependable man on my outfit. The raid must have been staged by Yaquis from Sonora. Now, I don't want to hear any more about it. Didn't mean to offend, Al. Mind if I come along? The Army has plenty of men to take care of the situation, but if you want to ride along, that's up to you. Going with them, Matt? Yeah, I think I will. Me too. I was just out there listening to the soldiers talking. The Mexican women were assaulted and left for dead. How well do you know this cyber? Well, enough to know he wouldn't shield his old man if he knew they were wrong. Is that what you mean? Let's just say I'd like to know if he can tell the difference between an Apache and a Yaki. Come on, let's settle up. Apache brew. That's right, two pie. And a U.S. Army canteen. Now, how do you account for that? Have they started selling army supplies to Yankees? I know what you're thinking, Matt, but I'm not going to snap at it. If and when we cut the trail of those murderers and catch up with them, then maybe we'll find out how this got here. Until we do, let's not jump at conclusions. I'm not asking you this time, Al. I'm going along. Matter of fact, Detective, I was about to insist on that myself. Just to prove how wrong you are. <laughs> When we bring them back, she'll be our most important witness. You do come with me. Over to Fort Jonesy. Take a man with you and have a look up that draw. You come with me. you. Stay relaxed just like you are. I see you're a master sergeant. I take it you're Al Cyber's top kick to Apache Kid, that right? I answer only to Mr. Cyber. Your boss thinks you're 20 miles east of here in Casa Grande. Now get on your feet. I want Cyber to get a good look at this hangover of yours.
One of the Indians who held up the railroad depot at Globe. That's proof enough, Al. Well, you dirty, drunken animal. I'd feel more sorry blowing the head off a rattlesnake. To think I brought you up like my own son, favored you above the others, preferred you to my own kind, and this is the way you pay me back. Your tribe has punishments and tortures for traitors like you. Your own relatives would be just as ashamed as I am. You ought to be thrown to the wolves like a piece of putrefying meat. But it won't happen that way. Oh, no, you'll get off easy. It'll give you a trial and hang you. Clean and quick. Ow, ow. Get him out of here, Matt. Get him out of my sight. Companion were sentenced to life terms in the Arizona Territorial Prison, but never arrived. They killed their guard, Sheriff Reynolds and Deputy Holmes, near Gila Bend in November 1888, and the Apache Kid escaped. In the frightening months that followed, more than 100 people, white men and red, fell victim to the Apache Kid's insatiable lust for blood. As skilled and as stealthy as a mountain cat, he eluded every attempt to catch him. Then one day in the spring of 94, we came back to Fort Huachuca on the strength of a clue we picked up near Bisbee, Arizona. We found that cartridge box near the body of a murdered rancher. You can see for yourself it has the stamp and number of this fort. Yes, but the kid knows how I feel. He wouldn't have the nerve to come this close. And somebody in this fort's been supplying him. Somebody who's more afraid of him than he is of you. Must be reservation Indians. More afraid of the kid's vengeance than they are the soldiers. How about you and me having a talk first thing in the morning? That's what I hoped you'd say, Al. Well, while you two iron out the wrinkles, I'll just go say hello to Tonya. She's still here, isn't she, Al? Yeah, it's done right well. She's helping the cook. See you in the morning. I'll tell you something, Matt. When I go after the kid this time, I'm going to get him. I'll get him if I have to look under every rock in the territory. Yeah. Well, I just came by to see how you were doing. Estoy muy bien y muy feliz, ma. In English. I am just fine. Good. Oh, and how pretty you look in your nice new dress. Mis amigos lo han comprado. Whoa. My friends here at the fort, they buy it for me. And you must have a lot of them. Oh, si. Well, I only drop by for a minute. I'm going to go wash up and then I'll see you at supper. Está bien. Adios. Bye. Mucho gusto de verla. Next morning, Jonesy was the first to discover Tonya was missing. She bore witness against him. The Apache kid. To the Apache's revenge is sort of a religious belief. He must have come in through the reservation. He couldn't have gotten in without somebody knowing it. Those Indians will talk or they'll think my vengeance is worse than the kid's. Cyber questioned every Indian on the reservation. 
Several Apaches had seen the kid and cyber persuaded them to talk. By afternoon, we were headed for the border. Toward evening, we got our first real break. That's the kid's pony. Fits the description. Might be an ambush. Cover me. He's got a bad cut on his leg. He's lame. Al, look there. Look at his hands on that driving calluses. Must be a mule skinner. It fits. A kid had a lame horse. Those wagon tracks lead across the desert straight for the Mexican border. I always heard Al Cyber could follow a cat's trail through a pitch black cave. The wagon tracks led straight to the border. Oh. Yeah, it looks like this as far as we go, Al. I was hoping to get him before I got across. By the time we went through government channels to get a legal permit, the kid would be deep into Mexico. Oh, it's a crying shame, that's what it is. Here we got our hands practically on his scalp, and he gets away on an international technicality. I'm sorry, Matt. I... Well, I'm going in after him. You stay in here, coming along. We might never get this close to him again. I guess if you can risk your career, we can risk our jobs. Let's go. Leave no trail. Must have got off a short way back. Otherwise, this team wouldn't have kept moving by itself. Yeah. Jonesy, you bring the wagon. Blood. Fresh, too. One of them must have skinned themselves when they jumped out of the wagon. Yeah, let's go. Hey, 
Hey, Jonesy, bring her right. Mexican authorities. Yeah. A United States scout and a railroad detective working without permission in Mexico. Sure would make trouble and embarrassment for our superiors. He was no good, Matt. He's not worth it. What I'd like to know is how we're going to tell the folks in the territory about it. They like to sleep nights, you know. I'll put it in my report that I have it on good authority. He died in Mexico of tuberculosis. After a while, when he don't come around, they'll believe it. the girl back to Fort Huachuca for burial. Then only the three of us ever knew what really happened that time in the Sierra Madres in the spring of 94.